I would like to acknowledge that this video is being filmed on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to their elders past and present, and extend that respect to any Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander or First Nations people who may be watching this video today. Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am very excited because I have a kids review titles that are coming out today. Like they literally come out on October 5th. Instead of trying to fit them into other videos, I just decided to put them all in their own video. So it's kind of like a bonus one because they're all from Ellen and Unwin who sent them to me. So I'm very, very grateful and now I get to share them with you. So I'm gonna start with the picture books and the first one is actually not a new release. This is a re-release of an older title that I think was first published in 2016, but is currently in reprint. And that is Farbish, The Horse That Braved a Bushfire by Narada McMullen and illustrated by Andrew McLean. This is a really gorgeous story about a true event. So this one is about a horse that survived the Black Saturday bushfires here, which was a really tragic, horrible event that caused a huge amount of damage. And this is the story of Fabish, who is, was a racehorse. And I didn't realize that that was the case when I you know, requested this book. And when he retired from racing, he basically was the horse that looked up after the other horses in the yard where he was living. And I don't know that much about horses. So I believe they're called yearlings. You know, everything's all good. And you know, Farbish is the, the older horse that takes care of everyone. But then the bushfires come and the trainer, Alan, has to make the heartbreaking decision to let Farbish and the yearlings go from the property. So he basically opens up the gate and for their safety basically says, you know, you have to go because otherwise they'll be caught out in the fires. So Farbish and the other yearlings, they leave the property. And then the trainer, Alan, and the three current racehorses that are there are holed up in this stone stable as the bushfires literally pass overhead, which some of that imagery in here, I mean, the illustration's gorgeous, but the imagery is terrifying because they were literally trapped, surrounded by fire. And then, of course, at the end of the book, Alan comes out. He doesn't expect the horses that he set free to have survived, but when he calls, they all come back and they're led by Farbish, who kept them all safe. So it's a really beautiful story. Again, lovely illustrations, great for when you want a picture book that does tell a true story. In terms of using it in the classroom, this is a really fantastic text. Great evocative language, perfect for using with older readers. Next up is another picture book, or oh, this one is a board book because it has cut out pages. I love books like this where you've got little windows. Hi. This is You Are Loved by Liv Downing. Liv Downing is a psychologist and a meditation practitioner and a few other bits and pieces and she has written this gorgeous book that reminds children that no matter what is going on in your life no matter what you're doing no matter how you're feeling or acting you are loved and each page has a different size cutout that builds heart and you can see the illustrations i'm just going to talk through here <laughs> the illustrations are beautiful and bright and vibrant and colorful and just so welcoming like i just i love just sitting here looking at the pictures and reading through it. There is a beautiful section at the back that has a guided meditation for kids and families. I mean, this is one, it's a perfect gift for kids, but it's also just a lovely book to have on your shelf. And while I was reading this, I was thinking about how I would use it in the classroom with my students. And the obvious one is to read through it, to talk about all the different scenarios that Live Downing presents in here, and then have the kids come up with their own and then to create like an extension of this book. What other situations are you loved in? Well, you're loved when you accidentally spill something on the floor or, <laughs> you know, when you make a mess in your room or anything like that. So I really, really love this. It's a gorgeous book, very sturdy, so it can withstand little hands and little fingers and I loved it. Now we're moving into the junior fiction section. Ando has a new book, a new series. This is Smarty Pup. The first book is Friends Forever. And this is JJ, who is Lily's new dog. And when they first get JJ, he's a very ordinary dog, if not the cleverest little pup. He trips over himself a bit and is, you know, very adorable. But then one night there is a storm and it turns out this is not a normal storm. It's a storm where some strange goo from space has fallen down onto the sky and anyone who steps into this goo or was touched by it suddenly gets mysterious abilities. And uh, JJ, who slept outside, happened to walk through a puddle of it and suddenly he can talk. And he's now very clever and he wants to go to school with Lily. And so she takes him to school and then things get a little bit out of hand while he's there. It's very cute. I love all the illustrations. Unlike some of Ando's other books, this one is fully, is full color and it's very, very awesome. I know I'm gonna introduce this book to the kids on Monday and I'm not going to see it again for a while. <laughs> It'll be in their hot little hands. So yes, 
very excited to have this. Very grateful for the opportunity to start one of Ando's series from the beginning. Moving into some middle grade titles, we have Runt by Craig Silby. This is a hefty book, but it's a very easy read. This is very reminiscent to me of things like Matilda and Babe. In this one, we have Annie, who sort of lives her own little life, and she ends up adopting a stray dog, Runt. Now, Annie and her family live in a rural town. There is not a lot of water, and what water there is has been commandeered by a neighbor who is very greedy and only thinks of himself. And so everyone in the town is suffering under the drought and under financial stress. And Annie happens to overhear her parents talking about their financial troubles, and she likes to fix things. And so she is constantly thinking about how she can help them. And when they're at one of the local fairs, she and Runt end up entering into an agility course for dogs and Runt comes out in first place. She gets the opportunity to then take Runt to the national competitions where again he wins and then again internationally. And this whole way through there's concern that they're not gonna be able to take Runt overseas because of the financial issues and so they pull money together and fundraise to get him there. The villainous element in this story, because of course there are, are very dastardly and determined to ruin everything and they definitely get their comeuppance which is great but this just had a very whimsical feel to it and it was a really lovely read. I know plenty of people will enjoy it like if you were a dog lover this is a great book for you if you've got kids who are dog lovers they'll enjoy it too. I'm not sure if this is Craig Silvey's first foray into kids books I know he writes for adults but it was very enjoyable and it did have that very lovely sort of magical kids story feeling to it. The next book is A Girl Called Corpse by Reese Carter. This is one that I received an ARC for months ago and then received a finished copy of it as well. Apparently this one had a bit of a bidding war on it for who was going to be publishing it here and Alan and Unwin won it out. And this was a really fantastic fantasy paranormal story about a ghost. So Corpse is a ghost. She doesn't remember who she was or how she died. She just knows that she's a ghost and she has managed to create an effigy for herself out of wax and seaweed and things that she found around her so that she can embody it and she can move around rather than just sort of being incorporeal and then fading away. She inhabits the hut of three witches and in this world witches are traditionally men and these witches are evil and they are trying to find a new source of power and when Corpse gets an unexpected message from an old man ghost before he fades away she realizes that she needs to leave this island that the witch's hut is on to try and find the answers of who she was. So she leaves accompanied by her huntsman spider friend Simon and the two travel to the nearby town and there they discover lots and lots of secrets. It was fun, it was adventurous, there's a great voice in this story as well. We don't quite know what kind of character she is because she doesn't know Know who she was in the past and she makes friends and allies along the way and I was just very intrigued by the world. I believe this is Reese Carter's first book. He is an Australian author so this was a lot of fun. Then we have The Raven Song by Zana Fralin and Bren McDibble. This is sort of on the older middle grade younger young adult sort of spectrum in terms of readership. This is about two characters who are separated by 100 years. This is a post pandemic post climate change world. The pandemic in here is not COVID but it is reminiscent of that and it was not written with that pandemic in mind. Both the authors had started writing this before the pandemic and it just happened to coincide with it. And both these authors are known for writing really hard hitting books for young audiences and this is definitely one of them. So our main character is Shelby and we spend a lot of time in her perspective. She's living in this post pandemic post dystopian world where she and her father live in a community of 350 people on 700 acres and that is how all of these communities have been set up. Everything fell to pieces, humans ruined the world with climate change and so in order to combat that these small communities were set up that had to learn to be self-sufficient off the land. Everyone has a job, everyone has a purpose and they have no more or no less than 350 people at any given point in time. But Shelby is very curious about the outside world and these communities are fenced in, but she keeps getting sent to fix holes in the fence. And so she keeps seeing out through the holes and eventually she decides to go and explore. What she finds is the truth about the history of what happened and she's very intrigued by that. This is a very thought provoking book. It would definitely promote great discussion around the pandemic, around climate change. It also deals with illness and people getting sick and being separated from their families. So there is a lot to take in here. This is again another book that I would probably recommend if you're going to give it to a younger reader I would read it first so that you know that you can talk about it with them afterwards but a really great book and one that I wouldn't be surprised when it ends up on you know shortlists next year. And then the last book that I have is a young adult title and that is Daughter of Darkness by 
by Catherine and Elizabeth Kaur. Now I'm going to preface this by saying young adult fantasy is not my genre. I'm going to try and give a really balanced view on this because this book was well written, it was intriguing, but it was not my thing. Just because it's not necessarily my personal taste. So bear that in mind. This is the story of Dana who is trapped working as part of this group that is bound to the House of Hades. So this has a lot of Greek mythology woven into it. She is a soul severer and she is responsible for shepherding souls from the real world so that they can then prepare to enter the underworld. She hates being a soul severer and she is desperately trying to save up for when she is eventually freed and she can escape this life. And then the king Orpheus turns up and he offers freedom to anyone who helps him to find the soul of Eurysides in the underworld and returns her to him. And of course, Raina volunteers along with a few other members of the soul severers that she knows. And they embark on this dangerous journey where they're basically told they're unlikely to return. It's a, you know, impossible mission. The thing that I struggled with this is that you have the not like other girls trope in here. You have her against the boys and they also have adults sending children to do jobs that will probably kill them. And those are things that I'm, I'm not a huge fan of in young adult as an adult now looking back at it. If you had given this to me 15 years ago, I would have absolutely loved this book because it does have that gripping sense of adventure. I also think it's a little bit long. I think it could have been a little bit tighter. I think some of the aspects where we get a lot of detail could have been tightened a little bit and then we would have moved, like the pacing would have been a little bit punchier and that probably would have helped as well. I did like the concept. I liked some of the reveals that we got, particularly in the second half, which again, I think the first half is what could have used a little bit more of a tighter plotline because once we get into the second half and we get the reveals like there are some very interesting things that happen some double crosses and some really interesting characters that we meet I love what is done with Hades in this book I love that Thanatos is a character in this book as well and it's there's some really creepy creatures living in the underworld so there were a lot of elements that I liked and some elements that are just not for me so take that as you will but I will say the cover is just stunning. I'm glad that I read it because it's been a while since I've read a young adult fantasy book. All right, so those are some of the books that are coming out on the 5th of October from Alan and Unwin. So thank you again to Alan and Unwin and Yvette for sending them to me. I enjoyed having a chance to read through all of them and hopefully I'll have some more kids books for you guys soon. I'd love to know if you guys are planning on picking any of these up at any point in time. Otherwise, feel free to leave me a dog emoji down below. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.